Um, so don't leave us, guys. We have someone really exciting coming onto stage right now. Um, I don't know, I, I think most of you guys are familiar with him, uh, but before I came onto the stage right now, he said this is the first time after a long time he's wearing a tie. Uh, so he put a tie on for you guys, which is awesome. Um, he is the chairman and the CEO of the Lebanese Broca Broadcasting Corporation International. Um, so let me introduce Pierre Aldehair. Hey. Welcome. We're having some sound issues. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Hello, Pierre. Hi, Monty. Welcome. Very good to meet you. Is that me? That's fine. Yeah? yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's very good to meet you. Um, we, we spoke briefly on the phone, so I'm utterly unprepared for our conversation, but we had a great conversation backstage. Yes, sir. Um, so I imagine that most of the audience know who you mm -hmm. are and what you've done. Um, but you don't. Have you? Yes. It's well, to date. Are you, sure? you know. <laughs> but if you could just give okay. me four or five um, minutes about you. Have you seen Mon? I studied industrial engineering in Los Angeles, so I have nothing to do with media. I came to media by chance, by mistake. Um, actually, in my grad school, I had one project because I was studying industrial engineering. And for people who don't know what is industrial engineering, it has more business than engineering in it. So I had to prepare a business plan for a new business, a startup at that time. <laughs> so this was the year 1992. And a year before that, Canal Plus started in France. So pay TV. Yes, so I decided, what about if we do pay TV in Lebanon? Can we do Canal Plus in Lebanon? And this was, was, was Canal Plus one of the first ever? To, to yes. Be, yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah. OK. So I did a study whether we could take the business model of Canal Plus into Lebanon. And obviously, uh, some of the prominent Lebanese heard about my study. Uh, this is this guy who is uh, Lebanese, who studies in the US, who is doing a study on pay TV. So during the war, there was only one TV channel in Lebanon, which is Tele Liban, the official government's channel. So when uh, the scene was changing, and private TV channels were starting to launch in Lebanon, they called me and they said, would you like to do a private TV in Lebanon? And this is how it started. This was 31 years ago. Wow. Wow. So a couple of years after Canal Plus. Right. So you started it off? Yes. And then what happened? And then what happened? Well, starting was easy and difficult. Easy because we, had, we were competing with only one channel that was government owned and that was, you know, government managed. And the government wanted to keep it that way? Yes. Or they were open? No, 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 no. There was one government channel broadcasting on probably two programs. Right. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so when we came in, it was easy because there was really practically no competition. It was difficult because we were working during wartime. So not that much easiness uh, to go around your day-to-day -day business. <clears throat> but it, what was nice is that we were all young, all dedicated with a lot of uh, stamina. We wanted to change the world. Um, and we wanted to do t television the way television was back then. You know, because of the war in Lebanon, the, the media industry stagnated as of 1975. So when we came in in 1985, 10 years ago, TV in Lebanon was still back in the old days. Okay. Uh, we changed the scenery, I think. If, if, uh, we probably started what is known as Lebanese TV or Lebanese media. And uh, I always thought that Lebanon as a market is too small. So we needed to expand. We had to expand. Well, were people at that time, what, could they watch other Arab channels? No. Was there was just, that was it. just okay. the terrestrial channel. You sometimes receive a signal, an overspill from either Syria or from Egypt. Yeah. But okay. that was it. Right. Satellite did not exist over there. Yeah. People did not know about DISH. As a matter of fact, people knew about what was going on in the outside world only once a week when somebody brought a tape of the international events, and they broadcasted on Tele Liban. 
yeah, yeah. So we were cut off. The good old days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> With the satellite technology, things started changes. The introduction of s satellite as uh, 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 as a technology started in the late uh, uh, late eighties in here. So there was a new opportunity. With satellite, we can expand. We can go to new markets. So there we are in uh, a country that speaks Arabic <coughs> among a potential market of 400 million people who live and do speak Arabic. So the minute that we could put our signal on satellite, then we could tap into this 400 million market rather than the 4 million which was, we were restricted in here. So that at the time, uh, as satellite evolved, was it, was it the same situation in Egypt, the same situation in Syria, there was just one channel uh, it, government broadcast? In the Arab world, it was all government. It was all the same. Okay. 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 There, there, is, there was no private TV channel in the Arab world. Well, it was a bit like the UK until the right. 80s, you know, exactly. it was BBC. Exactly. Nothing, nothing else. Nothing no. else. So, in 1996, two Lebanese channels went on, on satellite. LBC Sat and Future TV. Okay. And, and they were these yours? were Lebanese, they, both. They were your companies? My companies. Yes. Okay. Um, it was easy at that time. You know, when we went on satellite in 1996, there was only 10 channels free to air in the area. Nine of them were owned by government, and one private channel, which is NBC. It was really basic, NBC at that time. Really? News and Arabic movie, and nothing yeah. else. Yeah. So here comes two Lebanese channels, Vivid. Vivid, yes. Plenty, uh, you know, vibrant, totally different. I mean, we had social talk shows that were daring. You talked about subjects that were taboo in the area. Nobody talked about them. You have political talk shows with uh, uh, a vibrant Lebanese scene. Opinion. So, opinion, yeah. Okay. Where there, you know, is the master, who is practically God, and subjects. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we had, funny enough, an aerobic show that made a hit, you, you know, uh, nobody saw that kind of programming at the, during those absolutely. times. So, and that's that was happening in Lebanon. It was also happening across the Arab world or across the 400 million audience. Exactly. It, everyone was kind of all coming up. Exactly. All around. Okay. Exactly. So we made a really big change, LBC Sat and Future TV, during this, uh, this area. Um, we had practically a free run for about five years. So you ran the show. Right. You were the boss. Exactly. And when you're, then, the, when you're the boss, people always want to topple the boss. Exactly. And is that what happened? This is what happened. Ah, I see. From 10 channels, today, this was in 1996, 10 channels. Today, in 2016, 1,300 channels. Jesus. Free to air. Yeah, yeah. If you're counting the pay TV, we're almost 2,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So very big change. And the owners are government or investors who had really deep pockets. And the first thing when you have deep pockets, you start attracting talents. They attracted the very people who made LBC Sat. So and people, Future you TV. were losing your people. Exactly. So you are, as we say in English, in the shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so fortunately, we live in Lebanon. And in Lebanon, if you want to say what is the key differentiator of Lebanon in this part of the world, it's talent. So always talent. You take out talent, some more people come in. Yeah. And every talent that we lost, we gave an opportunity for three talents to replace them. And you know, this is something that kept us going. But with the budget that they have, uh, with uh, they went local. They were based in the Gulf. They were it's based like, in Dubai. It's like a, a normal industry. Exactly. The, the smart ones are the first ones, and then they get turned over by the people with the money a few years later. Exactly. And how long was your dominance? About five years? About ten years. Ten? God, that's yeah, a long that's time. That's a, a lot of time. And did you? Five, five years were really total <laughs> dominance. Five years of. Uh, and were you? 
prepared for the future? Did you know that there was going to be so much fragmentation? Uh, were, we, you, were you complacent? We saw it coming, okay? So we thought that, you know, we need to diversify. The first thing that we did, we acted as the kitchen of those channels. So we started to produce content for this 1,000 and more channels, which gave us a new opportunity, okay? But again, like anything else in TV, what works in each country is local. So we had to produce out of Lebanon product that would work locally, which is a little bit hard, okay? So you had to attract talents from the Gulf back in here, which is something that... Uh, so, so, so your audience in the, the years of dominance or the 10 years of near dominance, your audience wasn't just in Lebanon, it was across GCC as well. Right. You were the center of the Arab TV right. world. Wow. For, for a certain period of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then uh, started the, the period of regression. The, uh, we could not continue competing in this world where, you know, uh, money talks and it talks big time. Okay. Well, so, uh, one question. If you were dominant for 10 years, why didn't you have deep pockets as well? No, we, we were smart enough in order to be, again, the kitchen of this. Right, okay. All right, so we were the suppliers. First, we supplied the talents. Yes. Then we started supplying the content. And then you put the money into the programs, and you put... Right, right okay, right. all right. Now the situation is totally different. So that was, before we move on to the future, if you don't mind. Yes. So that was very disruptive to you, and as much as satellite TV was disruptive to government channels. Right. So this kind of deterioration or this l l low point, you're still in existence. So you must be, as we've been talking about all day, resilient to survive that. Well, uh, is. Uh, any time that you think, I mean, this is finished. No. No, no, no okay. No. no, no, it's totally the opposite. First of all, in Lebanon, people for the last five years are watching more TV than in the last 10 years, okay? Which is something really? very good. Really? Yes. That's different in, my, yes. it's different in my world. Okay. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah, no, good. Okay. Um, the fact that they are watching TV makes still TV as the more dominant media in, in Lebanon and in the Arab world. You know, for example, that the people that watch the most YouTube in the world are Saudis yeah. in the world, okay? Interesting, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, what, what, we needed to, what we need to do in here is first of all, fix our internal kitchen, which is fix the Lebanese market. Now this Lebanese market has four issues to do with. Four. Four. First one is the ad market. Let me give you an idea. In 1996, the ad market in Lebanon was $50 million. In 2016, 20 years after that, it grew only by 50%. No way. It's $75 million. No way. It is. That's a fact. Let's compare this with the Arab world. In 1996, the TV ad market was $250 million. Today, it is in excess of 1.3 billion. Billion, so billion. Billion. So it grew by five times, 500%, where we grew only by 50%. We missed by a zero. Okay. Why is that? Yes. Price war. Too many players on a small market. Right. Instead of getting bigger and larger, it is regressing. Okay. Okay. Second one. We need to fix the business model. Technically, we're free to air, but that's only technically. We've been pay TV for the last 15 years, but we're not getting any income out of this. No subscriptions. There is subscription. If you want to watch TV in Lebanon, you have to pay roughly $10 a month, but it goes to the pocket of the pirates, not to us. I see. Okay. Right. Okay. So we need to fix this. Right. So you have a piratical system. Exactly. A dis like the music. Pirates. Was this? Yeah. Whenever, worldwide, it is a subscription model worldwide. Yeah. If you are in the US, if you want to watch TV, you get it through your cable subscription or yeah. through your satellite subscription, okay? So this 
revenue stream we're missing on it. Yeah. Okay. Third one is production. Okay. Uh, we were the kitchen of the Arab world. We need to gain this position one, one more time. And by this, we need to create extremely good content. Always. Always. And now, uh, uh, it is getting harder. But I'm, I'm hopeful that, you know, with the talents that there is in Lebanon. But why is it getting harder? It's getting harder because people have the chance to watch more TV, more content, either through linear TV or mainly through digital TV. Uh, the choice that they have in front of us is, is, is so wide that in order to differentiate yourself, you really have to make good TV. Okay? Yeah. The fourth one is we need to tap into the digital world. We need to create platforms where people will pay to watch us on digital and mainly on mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. I was, I was coming back from a mobile show with some big players, you know, friends of mine and all that stuff. We were talking about TV. This is only eight years ago. Uh, and I said I only had four channels on TV, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV and Channel Four. And they looked at me as if I was something from the dinosaur Dinosaurs. days, you know. But in some ways, I, I, you know, I changed. Well, after they told me that, I felt terrible. So I, I changed, you know. Um, but I quite miss those days of looking forward to something on the TV. Right. There's something on Sunday night at 9 p.m. Not sports, but, you know. So I, I appreciate the way it's changed, and I'm a late mover away from TV. And it's happened in the last year. You know, right. my son is 13. There's also the massive uh, opposition of games, consoles, FIFA, 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 you know, and all that stuff. So I've now started to change my habits. I'm an older guy, you know. And I know that younger people, if something comes along, whether it's a chat network or anything like that, they'll change really quickly. So you say that in Lebanon, TV viewing is watching. In no disrespect, emerging economies, TV is, is growing. Right. In the West, allegedly advanced, that is falling off a cliff. You know, it is falling into the sea. Do you think that this is the end of TV? Not at all. As we knew it. As we knew it, okay. TV as you knew it, okay, probably, you, you know, we should change our name. We used to be called TV channels. Right now, we should be called content creator over multiple platforms. Absolutely. Okay. So... That may be something snappier than that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, TV will remain, and it is there, and very strong. But we need to create a substitution or an addition, not a substitution, an addition to that and create content that is distributed over multiple platforms. It is like, you know, you have one store and then suddenly you realize that you need to open four or five more stores. This is what is happening right now with television. You will leave the linear TV and you will continue investing in it while at the same time, you start investing in the new platforms and content that could work on multiple platforms or content that will work only on digital or only on mobile. It will probably definitely work on mobile, but with the alleged slow broadband speeds in this country, ah, you know, we need to fix this, this. This, is, this seems like problem number five. We, we, need, <laughs> we yeah. need to fix this, but eventually, um, what is good about Lebanon is that 4G is good. Yeah. 4G is good and it's expensive yep. still, but you know, I just received a message right now that you know, uh, there is like a 10%, uh, uh, they lowered the price by 10% just today. <laughs> so we need to keep doing this, giving affordable broadband for all the Lebanese. If uh, the government uh, continue on its promise, especially, you know, we have a new president right now, so there is a new dynamism and dynamic into the country. Uh, I see that you, Lebanon will be move to the broadband era in the next two or three years maximum. Broadband at a cheaper price. But, I mean, I've been to Africa a lot over the last few years, 
and the, the notion of piggybacking on the West's expensive outlay of fiber optics and all that stuff. This is useless. They will never be built. Useless. In Africa. You, you know, you and have never wireless be. broadband right now. Just go ahead and do it. Absolutely. So in, what? in six months, you can, you can, you can have lay out a, a network of wireless broadband that will move out, out of the shit. It will never happen in Lebanon. I don't it think. will. No, no, that, your one will. The fiber optic, I don't think. I, I don't, the fiber optics on the ground laying cables, that's something of the past. Yeah, no, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing to spring back and to be re-dominant? First of can, all, can you be? First of all, we are in a pe period of transition. So we're moving from uh, a business model to a new business model that is a little bit more complex. Fortunately, we have Banque du Liban and the visionary Riyad Salami who invested into this. So he gave us uh, facilities through certain uh, circulars through the Banque du Liban that will give us a breather time. In order for us to build a new business model, we needed to invest and have the sufficient time in order for this investment to pick up. Do you need deep pockets to do so? Uh, on our own, we could not do it. Right. Okay. So you would, uh, you would seek... So what he's giving us is long-term, at very long-term financing at very low, uh, very low rate. I see. Uh, I think with this, we can revive the industry. We can especially revive the production. We can create excellent content and we can reach the globe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can tell me that, you know, with satellites you could reach the globe, but it was an expensive way of reaching the globe. Now, you can just upload it, and immediately, those 400 million Arabs, you can reach them. Snap. Absolutely, absolutely. In, in my city, London, 20 years ago, everyone wanted to work in TV. Uh, not me. I have a face for the radio. Right. And, a, and a radio for a face. So okay. this was never possible for me, you know. Okay. Um, but now everyone wants to work in tech. Right. You know, it's one, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be an app, I want to grow a beard, you know, all of that. I want to be a hipster man, you know good. what I mean? Which is fine. Hipsters good. do good things. Um, so that, that talent that used to go straight into TV is now kind of bifurcating and going into, into tech businesses. How do you keep the youth involved how do you get them to you know well why be on tv if i've got my own youtube channel with two million users can you monetize or it if you can monetize it that's fine right. you're going to go over there yeah but we're making sure that our business model will be quicker in monetizing right, okay. this kind of content and the talent will come to you as a result definitely and right. the level of talent in lebanon the the level of talent the the ability of t talent here you're seeing it coming through the universities, you're seeing it coming through the educational system? Definitely. 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 And, you know, Lebanon is, although it is an Arab country, but it is closer to the West than any yeah, of the Arab yeah. countries in the area. Yeah. So, in a way, we act like a bridge between the US, the Western world, and the Arab country. Yeah, absolutely. And lifestyle is totally different in here. We're much more liberal than anywhere else. So no, no, that's true. Yeah. But, but, but when it comes to the content that you're creating, does it have appeal outside the 400 million speaking Arab world? Can it be low? Could it could it be that you create this amazing show, like I don't know, Big Brother or any anything that was revolutionary? You did it first. Could you see a market for it in Asia if you're a bridge between Europe and Asia? Ah. Can you see a, the Japanese loving Lebanese soap operas? The, count, uh, the, the, the language is a barrier and it's a form of protection. Okay? So we need to reach those 400 million speaking Arabic. We are, thank God, limited to, to, to this. There is nobody right now in the US thinking of producing in Arabic. If they want to do that, they come to us. Okay? Yet at the same time, with the Narcos experience, we found out that, you know, suddenly you can be part of Absolutely. a giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Narcos is a series that was produced by, in Brazil yeah, yeah. for the Brazilian market, yeah. but immediately it made it to the worldwide market. Amazing show. And 
you know, it's an international hit. Yeah, yeah. So here comes a new opportunity where we have to be smart enough yeah. because, you know, the prices that, or the, the amount of money they invest in shows such as Narcos, yeah. which, in a way, it's still a Brazilian drama, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it made it to the international level is amazing. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, probably I still think the most innovative channel in the TV right. is Channel 4, right. which is kind of the last terrestrial. Channel 5 is just dirty. Right. But Channel 4 is creative, you, you know, and it's a terrestrial channel. Right. They've started to, to set up a, a channel online and on TV right. of foreign content, foreign TV shows from Spain. I mean, not maybe Lebanon, but, you know, you know, so that, so Israel, oh, sorry, you know, all of those type of countries, you know, so there is a market for it. I mean, I've been, I've been watching a German show on Channel 4 about, in, in German, about the Cold War and all that stuff, and it's brilliant, you know, and I like looking, I like, I like film TV to be exotic and like amazing, and even if I see, you know, it's subtitles, I, I, I think it's fantastic. However, Yes. I'd like to ask you, what's it going to be like here in five years' time? Are people still going to be watching TV? In five years' time, if we know how to act and to get our shit together, <laughs> okay, I think that there is a huge po po potential for this country. Again, this country is known for talent. It is known for innovation. It is known for creativity. If we know to play our cards right, and I think we know, you know, we're Lebanese at the end, we know how to get our way around, there is an opportunity because of the internet to be creating the best content, the best Arabic content for the whole world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're confident you can do that. And you can do it I'm here. Sure. Oh, well, that's sure. amazing. Um, do you have any advice for one of people that want to work in TV that are in the audience? what they should do, where they should study, should they stay here, should they go? How should they live? Um, I mean, we have very good universities in here, okay? And those universities are producing uh, or, or are graduating extremely good talent, but that's not enough. We, the, the world is a village right now. Absolutely. Okay, you need to go global. You need to know exactly what is happening all over the world. You especially need to know what is happening in Silicon Valley. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the most important things if you want to work in media. All right. Hey, listen, I wish you the best of luck. You seem like a very nice man. Thank you, sir. Round of applause, please. Thank you so much. Very good. Pierre, before you leave, we have a new tradition of taking selfies together. So I would not want to go without a selfie with you. Wait, wait, wait. We need to get the crowd. Hi. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.